Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see Lordic Python and today we'll create a Telegram bot for our crypto prices. So that bot will fetch crypto prices from that CoinGecko website and it will show us those prices in our Telegram. So let's start. Once again, today we'll create a bot that will fetch those prices for uh, different cryptocurrencies and it will show those prices in that bot. So for example, I can say Bitcoin and send that message to my bot and uh, the message will be... so. The bot will tell me that Bitcoin is, for example, $40,000 or I can say Ethereum, so any cryptocurrency and uh, the bot will return the price of that cryptocurrency for that specific moment. So how can we do that? In order to do that, we need three things. First of all, we need our cryptocurrency API because we need to fetch those prices. And for that matter, I want to use CoinGecko.com because it has like the best API out of all of them. You don't need any keys, any accounts, none of that. So what you're going to do is go to go to coingecko.com and here you have um, here you have here you have crypto API in products. So crypto API and uh, crypto API explore docs and here you have your documentation. The second thing that we're going to do is um, or that we're going to need is our Telegram API. So first of all, we're going to have crypto API. So crypto API is coin gecko then telegram api is um, telebot so telebot is a library i've talked about it before and it's a library that allows us to write those bots for the telegram and third of all we need to just write that bot yeah just write that's it so those three things will be used in today's video and um, first of all what i want to say is that in order to communicate with CoinGecko API, what you can do is either send raw requests. So for example, what I can do is open that ping and uh, try it out here, execute it. And then it gives me like the URL here. So what you can do is send raw requests with Python using, yeah, as you can see, the API works. So what you can do is either send a raw request with Python request, so with requests with that library or what you can do is install PyCoin Gecko API. So PyCoin Gecko API, it's a client for Python built by some person, I don't know who that is. And uh, as, as you can see, we have Explorer API and we have API change work. So what, what happened to our API and clients unofficial. So in clients unofficial, you can find all the clients that you're gonna need for different programming languages. And here we have Python. So Python, let's go here and yeah, so that is, that's our API. So it's a Py Coin Gecko API. And let's just use it. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go to PyCharm, pip install Py Coin Gecko API. Aside from that, we're gonna install Py Telegram bot API in order to work with Telegram. And also you can install Environs. So Environs, I'll explain the code that I have right here. And as you can see, all of my requirements are already satisfied, but it will be different for you. So once you install all the libraries, what you can do is go and copy that code. So if you have never watched my video on keys, passwords, and all that stuff, then you and you don't know about environment variables, then you are missing out because when we're talking about passwords, keys, and all that stuff, we don't really want to expose them in, in our code. So as you can see right now, you can't see my bot token and uh, that is very, very important. So, mm, yeah, kind of like that. And uh, what I'm doing here is basically I'm just getting my environment variable. As you can see, I have .n file and inside of that file, I have my bot token. So what, what I'm doing here is getting my environment object. Then I'm reading my .n file and I'm just getting my bot token. So bot token, it's the token for our Telegram API. So very basic stuff. Now I have my bot token and let's import Telebot in order to work with Telegram API. But actually before Telebot, let's import PyCoin Gecko API because I want to show you how we can fetch those prices from PyCoin Gecko API. So from PyCoin Gecko import Coin Gecko API, it's the client for our, so coin client, it's the client for our API, let's create it. And after that, what we can do is go back to the documentation and uh, find the simple slash price URL. So that simple slash price URL allows us to just look at the 
currency, so for example, Bitcoin versus USD. So IDs is Bitcoin, we can provide many of those, but I'll just provide one coin and versus currencies, it's the currency that you are gonna compare your first asset to. So in our case, Bitcoin to dollar. Let's execute it and um, yeah, as you can see, here it is. So here is our response value, it's, which says Bitcoin for 37,396 dollars. Very, very simple, very, very basic. And what we can do is actually use that same request in our CoinGecko API. So what I'm gonna do is use coin client get price. So get price is the same request. Let's provide IDs as Bitcoin, Bitcoin in VC currencies as USD. And let's just print the result of that API call. So let's, oh wait, let's, do it like that. Let's run it. Uh, something is not all right. Get is not. Oh yeah, because for environs, what I need to do is actually do it like that. Yeah. All right. Now everything works. So it was an error with my environs code, but now what you can see is that when we are using get price from CoinGecko API, we are getting Bitcoin to dollar and the price of Bitcoin to dollar. What we can do right now is get that price so we need that number in order to show it to our users in our telegram bot so what i'm going to do is use uh, first of all bitcoin because that is the first key in our dictionary and second of all usd because that is the second key in our response and as you can see here we have our number so 36 37 thousand dollars very very cool now what we need to do with that information we need to just build our bot so just build the API for Telegram and then just show the show the price to our users. So let's do it. Now I'm going to import Telebot and actually from Telebot I'm going to import Telebot. So my Telegram bot and let's create it here. So bot equals Telebot and we need to provide our token, bot token. Token equals bot token. So as you can see, I'm using environs and once again, if you don't understand environment variables, all that stuff, just watch my video on the keys and uh, you you get it. But as I see, as you see, I'm using Enveron and I do not expose my token anywhere. So very, very simple. Then what we're going to do after that is use a handler. So message handler, bot message handler. And let's create our mm, crypto price message handler message like that. So message handler is used in order to respond to our messages. And uh, as you can see, we have different filters here. So comments, regex filter, functional filter, content types and all that stuff. But what I'm gonna do is just use content types as text. So content types tells you, and all those filters tell you that you're only gonna handle the messages that suit those functions, filters, objects, and all that stuff. So I'm gonna just use content types as text. And it tells me that content type, so the the type of the content then that the user is going to provide to our bot, so the user is going to send, should be a text. So, for example, I can say Bitcoin, and uh, that will that will pass to my message handler. But if I'm, if I'm sending like a voice message, or I will send a photo or a video, then that uh, crypto price message handler will just miss that that message because of the content type filter. So very, very simple. Now what we're gonna do is let's just print our message. And after that, I'm gonna say bot.polling. And of course, I'm gonna say it in main, like that. So bot polling just runs your bot and uh, yeah, kind of like that. Print message and uh, as you can see, we already have three messages because I sent them before that. So yeah, very, I'm wondering why we have that big gap here. Don't really know. But as you can see, the messages are the same. Oh yeah, we have that big gap because of the fourth message that is that is here. Very strange, but yeah, kind of like that. So very, very simple. We just receive our messages. What we're going to do now? Now we're going to use message.text in order to receive the text of the message. And um, that's what we need because we are going to get the price for different assets. So for example, if I write Ethereum or let me write Solana for, for 
for you to see. So as you can see, when I write Bitcoin, when I write Solana, I receive the same the same text in my terminal because I'm using message to text from our message. And let's save it as crypto crypto ID equals message text. And um, yeah, kind of like that. So crypto ID is the cryptocurrency that we're gonna fetch from our API. Now let's just fetch that cryptocurrency. So like that, then price equals coin client get price. And what we're gonna do here is instead of using Bitcoin, I'm gonna use crypto ID and uh, here as well, because if I, for example, get the price of Ethereum, so here, Ethereum, Ethereum, like that. So if I get that price, the response body changes to the dictionary of Ethereum to US dollar. So what we need to do is actually provide crypto ID inside of the inside. So as a parameter to get price function and also provide it inside of those braces or brackets. So we can really get the price of that cryptocurrency. And um, then the only thing that we need to do is send that message back to our user. So in order to do that, what we can use is bot send message. And uh, there are two things that we need to provide. So chat ID is message.chat.id. Basically, we're using the same chat that uh, sent the so they sent the first message. So for example, if we have two users and I I'm sending like Savannah here, that so my chat will receive the price of Savannah, but the user and the another user will not receive anything. And also we have text. So text is uh, the text of our message. Let's use it like that price of price of and then f string price of our crypto ID. So price of that cryptocurrency is price. Now I think we're all set. So we are just saying that price of that cryptocurrency is the price that you received from the API. And as you can see, price of Savannah is $100. Let's write Bitcoin. As you can see, everything works. Let's write mm, like that. And yeah, there is a problem. So I'm, I was gonna talk about that problem a little bit later, but um, yeah, as you can see, we already have those prices and I can choose any crypto asset that I want, but there is one problem. If I do not choose the right cryptocurrency, so if I choose the cryptocurrency that does not exist, I receive an error because let's go to our crypto API. And if, for example, I choose something like that, so obviously that cryptocurrency does not exist and I will execute it. So you can see the response body is empty and uh, we need to account for that because if I let my users to just ruin my application like that, then it's not going to work. So what I need to do here is instead of using just price, I'm going to say price response equals to just the result of that coin get price function. And then after that, what I'm going to say is if price response. So if we have something in our price response, if it's not empty, then price equals price response from crypto ID and USD. So if we have something as our response, then we're just saying that crypto ID from USD is the price of that asset. But else, if we don't have that uh, price, so if price response is empty, what we're going to say is that just is that copy, let's copy that uh, send message and uh, here crypto, then crypto ID was not found. Very, very simple. So let's refresh our, so once again, if the price has something in it, so if it contains something, we send the message that price of something is something, but else if there is nothing, we just saying, yeah, nothing was found because that price is, uh, so that coin, that cryptocurrency does not exist. Let's just write something like Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, as you can see, everything works. So we still receive our prices. Ethereum, like that. Yeah, as you can see, everything works. But if I'm writing, if I write something like that, as you can see, crypto, the name of my crypto was not found. And uh, it's a very simple bot, but yeah, kind of like that. So we incorporated uh, Telegram API and um, CoinGecko API together. And that is the 
Yeah, that's kind of the whole idea of that bot. So thank you for the watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my Telegram channel if you want. Then, yeah, leave a like, leave a comment. Thank you for the watching and bye-bye.